Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we have a very interesting topic to dive into for all you Power BI enthusiasts out there. Today we'll be discussing the different types of storage modes in Power BI, helping you to understand when to use each one of them and how can they impact your reporting and analysis and make it better. But before we jump into the details, I want you to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update on Power BI or other data related topics. So let's get started. Starting with import mode, import mode is the default method when creating a new Power BI desktop solution. It is also the most common method to develop data sets. Now the way import mode works is that it creates a copy of your data set or your data source in your local Power BI file. This can also be termed as cached data. If you wish to publish the report to Power BI service, then this data resides in your Power BI. Import modules are the fastest when it comes to query fetching and import mode also gives you the full capability of Power BI whether you are working with M language or DAX expressions in your Power BI. Also one important point that I would like to discuss here is that without Power BI premium, your import dataset size is limited only to 1 GB. But with premium, you can get 10 GB plus of data access. Now coming to the other data storage mode is Direct Query. Direct Query is an alternative to import mode and is considered as an option when um, data volumes are too large and also when reports and dashboards need to deliver near real-time data. Now the way Direct Query works is that we connect to the data source and grab the schema of the table structure. Column names are stored in Power BI but the data itself stays in the data source. But let me warn you that there are some limitations to direct query, such as not all data sources support direct query. There are also a number of performance issues. And lastly, time intelligence functions can't be used accurately when you are using direct query mode. Now, before we move ahead to the other data storage mode, let me summarize you and compare import mode versus direct query again on some key factors. So starting from a performance standpoint, imported data is the best and fastest because it can leverage the power of the Power BI engines. And whereas direct query relies on the source, which might be typically slower and it does vary from source to source. Now talking about number of data sources, both import mode and direct query allow you to connect to an unlimited number of data sources. When it comes to data transformation, there are no query editor restrictions with imported data. But again, direct query sources are limited and can only leverage the transformations which are available based on the data source. Also, data modeling capabilities are not restricted for imported data or import mode, but for direct query, data modeling is very limited. There are limited DAX functions available and you cannot create calculated tables against direct query data sources. Also, when using import mode, the data model size of imported data sets does increase your overall model size. Paying attention to the size of your imported data sets could help you make the performance issue less severe. Again, the individual data size limit is a gigabyte 1 GB, but this restriction is lifted for premium capacities as I've talked about it in the video earlier as well. And direct query is a great option in this case because it doesn't increase your data model size and is only limited by the data source hardware. Data refresh options for imported data are a bit more limited comparatively. So imported data can only be refreshed every 30 minutes and eight times per day for a typical pro user or 48 times per day if you actually have a premium capacity. Plus uh, full refreshes of imported data are expensive meaning they're machine resource intensive and they take up computing power and time. Talking about direct query, it's great in this case because it offers you near real time data and always reflects the most recent data available. So when coming to row level security or RLS, when using import mode, there aren't any restrictions on all the definitions of RLS and you can define them based of the data source which you are using. But for direct query, 
Low level security roles are only available for some direct query data sources and not all of them. So that's a very important consideration there and a big limitation if you're going to implement row level security. Now that we have already discussed import mode, direct query, let's come to live connection. When talking about live connection, this mode is quite similar to direct query, but it is often used when the data is residing in analysis services or Azure analysis services. Now the magic of live connection is that we only have a connection string and everything else resides in the model itself we don't bring anything to our Power BI desktop. The limitation of live connection I want to tell you guys here is that in live connection, you don't have any data view and by default, you can't make any changes to the data models. So that were the most common data storage modes or connection modes in Power BI. You could also learn about composite mode where you can mix direct query, import mode and live connection for different types of data sources. You could also work with aggregation and summary tables which are features that complement import mode allowing you to create summaries and aggregations of your data to speed up your performance. So I hope in this video I might have helped you to recognize the different connection modes in Power BI and when to use each one of them. If you have any doubts or questions please feel free to reach out to me in the comment section down below. And yeah, this was all from me today. Bye-bye.